problem or not, but that is much more The point of the thing is set up that we are given the output to the system while well then we are given a long input, inch of it, and you want to find tens of it. So the setup is while well then equal to the inner convolution. We are also told that all these sequences are causal, which means the first index is zero. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, and so forth. Zero, one, two. Okay. And here you are trying to find x of knowing that well that came from a convolution. Okay, so I can write it out. So this is tiny at zero. Thank you. 
case, maybe I have zero and six zero plus six one times and so forth. And then this is a equation of y zero equal to x zero times h zero. Yeah. Y zero I know, I can do some sequence. H zero I know, I can do some sequence. So I, I can solve for
it's off the graph.
for the four times sigma. So we know what h is. So I need your help. Tell me what is a row. Look, you don't want to do the version because this is this is yeah. 
a metric inversion for arbitrary bit. Okay? If you have a, a good, a, what do you call it? Triangular right over train. Yeah, you don't have to do any inversion. It's yeah. basically, and I was like, what? That's what he's doing over there. Right? So let's see. How do I get to put it zero? I got three times this guy and this guy. Right? So I'm going to add times three. So how three times this is 
12 plus this is 6. 6, right. six here, same up there, right? 
if I were to do it in number one method, what would be, how do I find the appropriate response? If I tell you that this is the LTI system. What is the definition for the appropriate response? What's the definition for input response? Yes? Very yeah. well, the the right, good. Input response, right, is a response if as and when we conform the code of data function. That's definition. Plug in. Here, I got x of n, which is the response for the system. I call that input response. One half delta n plus delta n minus one. By definition. Because if I draw this out, then draw it out, what do I get? Basically, an average system, right? You take input, co-input, add it to the past input, and average the system. So this is averaging. Okay? Averaging is what? Is it low pass or high pass? Low pass. It's low pass. So later on, when we find x will be the real omega, we'll plot the response. You will see that the response will be like a low pass filter. Okay? So let's go through this. So here's n. We'll plot the x of n. One half times zero, one half times one. Okay. Now, what would be h of e to the j omega? So that's your input response. We plug in the formulation there. How many terms do I have? Summation and k, how many k do I have? That's non zero. Two. So I have, again, two terms, right? So basically, these two terms right here, what is the Fourier transform for delta n? This one. If I plug in, we have a signal, delta n, right? Summation delta n is k okay now. It's only valid at time k goes zero. Everything else is zero. When k goes zero, this is one. This is also one. Right? So I know that the Fourier transform for delta n is equal to one. This is one half. What is the Fourier transform for a shifted delta function? This is shifted. Right? At what k? This is non zero. One. That's only one term. At one, what is that value? In value of omega. So basically, to shift, you have a phase. Okay? If you shift by five, what do you have here? Oh, sorry. And? And? This is for delta function and for a shift of delta function. When I shift by 5, what do I get? E to the minus j, 5 omega, and so on. Okay, a shift is a phase. Right? So that's your input, that's your real class one. That's <coughs> method number one. Finding the input response and then finding the real class one. Any questions?
You guys, what happened? So the second one, right? Let's take a look at this question here. I'm going to take three transform for the whole equation. I can do that. So this summation here, this summation there, e to the minus j over the n, okay. whole equation. What would be on this side? It would be by definition y of e to the j over the n. Right? Over here, what do I, what do I get? One half x of n. What could be the corresponding function? X of e to the j omega. I'll take the equation from the whole equation. Okay? Plus one half of what happens when I shift the signal? So let's let's think about it, right? I know x of e to the j omega is defined in this summation to say x of k d minus j omega k. That's my definition. Okay? So I shift the signal by one. Okay? So now I have a signal, I can shift it, and call that x shift by one e to the j omega. This could be summation in k x of k minus 1 minus j over k. Right, I'm detecting my signal x of n, I shift it by 1. The corresponding for the transform, I call it x shift. I want to see how x shift is related to x. Okay? So how do I manipulate this? Well, I can then change the variable. Right? Let's change the variable here. What do I get? If I say L equals to K minus 1. This is going to give me summation in L. X of L e to the minus j omega k is l plus 1. Okay? And I can pull out term e to the minus j omega and then what I have left will be the free transform and call this x e to the j omega. So very similar to the inflows, okay? If you shift the input, you multiply by e to the minus j omega times 1. 1 was the ray transform for the input. If you shift a signal, you also multiply it by e to the minus j omega times the ray transform. everything by x, okay, what is left will be one half, plus one half e to the minus j omega, exactly on the other side. Okay. So let's see what kind of spectrum does it have.
how do I find a magnitude is one of these great transforms. Okay? Take out two if you want. 
to be on half one plus cosine. So the square root to be
you are starting at 50 zero here. We go to 52, pi, and so on and so forth. You start at low frequency, go back to low frequency. So this will be high frequency. That's far as away from, from zero frequency. Now later on, well, next time we will talk about uh, sampling. It turns out that this is when you sample. This will be your highest frequency of your analog signal. Okay? So let's get back to phase response. How do I find phase response of this system? How will I find phase response of a complex model? Can inverse of imaginary over, over real is too difficult. Well, this one's easier, but easier one to way to do this. Okay? This one, what you can see is their symmetry. Okay? If I factor out, the symmetry is one half one half, right? Symmetry right here, one half one half. If I check out half the place, then I have a real particle. Okay? So, if I check out e to the minus j omega 2 on its left, so e to the j omega 2 plus e to the minus j omega 2 on its side. Two both sides of the value two. So do it this way. Give me one half of well, one half of two is the star. E to the minus j of the value two and both sides of the value two. Is there any phase on both sides of the value two? It's a real one thing, it's no phase. Right? All the faces in here. So the face is minus of the gap two. Not the shortcut. So this problem. All problem you have to do with the attention. The typical will give you attention problem. Okay? So if you can have real or real symmetry, input response like this. I can always factor out the middle phase. Okay? So, first for example, suppose I give you the following input response. Plot it out. 
going to be a straight line. Okay? Now, we cannot plot a complex quantity. Right? So, either plot real part, imaginary part, or you plot magnitude, you know, what things. That's very clear what happened in random response, right? We know that this is like a low pass process. It's not a very good one. You pass the low frequency, and it's trying to eliminate high frequency. So I would call this is a low pass filter. It's not a very good one, but it's a low pass filter. And we know that averaging, we have a very random signal like this. We take averaging, what happens to the signal? Right? So like low pass filter. So in this case here, when you only take two sample averaging, you will not only have a very good low pass filter, right? Typically you have more and more samples to to, to, uh, to average it over. Okay? And what do you call this phase right here? That's a name for it, the phase. And linear phase system is the most popular system to design. Why? Because Y equals to H of X. Okay? So if you look at this, you see that the phase of Y is what? When you multiply, what happens to the phase? Phase of e to the j, so the phase does not multiply. It will what? It will add, right? Phase of h added to the phase of x. If the phase is linear, it does not distort the, your input phase. So system with linear phase is very, very, very nice to work with. If you can, you always try to design a system with interface. Because it does not distort the phase of the input. Okay? So the interface system is something that we will talk about in this class. Very, very useful. Now, there's another notion that's called group relays. Nice, right? 
If I don't have a linear test system, let's say this is tau h. If I have tau h hat, a different system. And let's say the low frequency, they have low root delay, and high frequency that very high root delay. Suppose that's the case. What happened? Let's say the maximum response is O1. Okay? Only fake response now. What happened to your output? Suppose I design a system. Maximum is 1. Fake is like this. I'm filling in Beethoven symphony number 9. That's the last one. Do, 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 right? Okay? So, that's very, very low frequency, right? What happens here? It comes out after, let's say, this is 10 samples. Come out after 10 samples. And this is 5 samples. 4 samples. Extreme, right? When you have a part that actually have drum and violin, what happens is that the violin coming out weigh, weigh a thousand samples and the trunk coming out at ten samples. It severely distorts the signal. Okay? So it's very, very weird. If you design this kind of system, but it's, it's a nice effect. Okay? So what, what it's saying here is this tells you the delay for frequency. Right? It's saying here that. Let's say this is 5 to 6. It's saying that low frequency up to 5 to 6 is delayed 10 samples. And then there's a ramp up to so let's say 5 to 2. And the high frequency from 5 to 2 to 5 will be delayed by 1,000 samples. So the input in that particular time frame, one has drum. And then violin, high note, this sounds very, very strange. Okay? That's why linear phase is always the choice of physical design, which we will discuss in the class. Let's take a short break. What time do I have?